Hi there, Global Studies students. It's Mr. Martini here, and today I'm going to walk you through your first activity for our next unit on Asia. This is your Asian map. Now, pay close attention to this because what we really want you to get out of this is a better understanding of the location and relative location of various countries and capitals in Eastern and Southern Asia. So, first things first, these are the two documents that you're really, really going to need. Here's your blank map of Asia that I'd like you to put into Notability so that you can edit it. And here is your Asia map task sheet with everything that you need to know as far as what to put on your map. Now, the only other thing that's not here are the textbook pages that you'll find as a PDF file on the assignment those you will use to locate the different countries and capitals around Asia. So the first thing that we want to do on our map, that is on our blank map, is on our urban population key, we want to color code this just like we did before. Now you can do this with any color, but 25% and below, 26 to 40, 41 to 55, 56 to 70 and 71 and above you want to make each of those a different color for me I've made them red blue green brown and purple now that's just the first thing you want to do as far as getting yourself ready and prepped the second thing that you'll want to do is fill out a little bit of your map key now you're going to need a dot a star and probably a, a kind of a blue line to represent a river those are all things that you are also going to be labeling in your blank map that is a dot for regular cities a star or an asterisk for um, capital cities and then probably a blue line to represent rivers those are all things that you're going to want in your map key now let me show you how you would go about as far as a step-by-step -step process filling out this map so I've done a couple of things already so you'll notice here I've labeled China I've also over on this side labeled Pakistan now notice how I put it just to the outside that's perfectly fine if you can't get it to exactly fit in the country itself don't feel bad about writing the country to the side and maybe just putting it on the outside there all right so I've labeled China so I've done step one dot number three right here China now after I've labeled all of my countries the next thing that I'm going to need to do is color the country according to their urban population urban population is to say the number of people living in cities in that country not people living in suburbs not people living in um, rural farm areas but the number percentage of people living in big cities in these countries so if we look at China China's 59.2 percent of its population is living in urban areas in cities so we're just going to go ahead and round that to 59 and if we think about 59 okay I'm going to go over my urban population key 25 and below no 26 no here we go 59 which is China that would fall into this range here so for me that means that I colored it brown so now I would go in and color China brown I would make this country brown to signify its urban population now let's take a second to do Pakistan so Pakistan is right here 36.7 so we could round that up to 37 so let's just do that so 37 percent of Pakistan's population live in urban environments live in cities so where's 37 percent 25 and below nope 26 to 40 here we go 26 to 40 so for me that means that it would be blue so then I would color 
the country of Pakistan blue, and that would signify that 37% urban population. Now, after I had labeled my countries and I had colored them appropriately, I'm then going to move on to my capital or my cities that are found in each country. And this is why earlier we made dots and stars. As you go through this list, you're going to find where does this city belong. So let's take Beijing again. So Beijing is the capital city of China and is roughly, you know, right about here. Um, so I would put a, an asterisk, a star, because Beijing is the capital city, and I would put that right about where it's located. If it's not exact, that's not a big deal, but you want to put that about where it's located. So you're going to want to go through your long list of cities here, make sure that you find them and label them on your blank map. Then we're going to go on to step three, and step three is labeling bodies of water. Now, if the body of water is, for example, an ocean, well, you don't need to worry about coloring the entire ocean. That'd be a lot of work. But if it is a river, then I want you to make sure that you draw that river into your map using the color blue. Using the color blue. That way, it just is more easily identifiable. Okay? Finally, for step four, you're going to label the Himalayan mountains and Mount Everest. So two very important mountain regions and mountain peaks in Asia. I would like you to label those on your map. Finally, if we look at step five, we've already done that. So step five is choose a color that represents each urban population range. That's what we did right away in the beginning with our key. And then, of course, you want to put a compass rose on your map, north, east, south, and west. You want to make sure that that's clear and it is easily identifiable on your map. Okay, you follow all those steps, and your first activity of our Asian unit is going to go great. Let me know or your global studies teacher know if you have any questions. Thanks.